these two programs are really one overall program to recognize and manage the hazards that we have in our workplace. SLAM is a tool used by miners before a task, during a task, and after a task, no matter the size or complexity of the job. Simply stop and think about the job. Take a few seconds to look around the area and check out the hazards for each step. Then analyze if you have the proper knowledge, training, and tools. And finally, manage the hazards by removing or controlling them by using proper equipment. On the other hand, SMART is a tool used by management that involves miners at all levels of the process. The first step is to develop a team or teams comprised of management and miners. Yesterday, the president of our company selected the members of our first team. They are John, mine superintendent, Lee, a mechanic, Justin, a miner operator, and myself. SMART is a process that never stops. It continues to focus and refocus on specific risk and tasks encountered in the mine to provide long-term solutions. Our team will take the lead in this process to make sure that it's carried out. The first thing the team will do is stop to isolate each step in a task to identify past and potential accidents, injuries, and violations. Once the team does this for a particular task, they will present their findings to all of our miners. Each miner will be given an opportunity to comment and the team will incorporate their input. Then the task is measured by evaluating the risk and the barriers that have allowed the hazards to cause injuries. For example, the team may focus on trips and falls, strains, cutting and pinching hazards, Severity, how serious is the hazard? Probability, how likely it is to cause an accident. Cause, what human or physical barriers have allowed the hazards to cause injuries? After measuring, the team will once again present their findings to all of our miners. Each miner will be given a chance to comment and the team will incorporate their input. The next step is to act by implementing controls to eliminate or minimize any hazards to make the risk unacceptable. Before implementing these controls, you again will be given an opportunity to comment. Miners conduct reviews by observing each other during the course of a normal work shift. These results will be tallied and shared with you. Last and most importantly, behavior-based programs are developed with the help of our miners who are trained in these newly established programs. These steps, guys, aren't that different from what we do as a normal part of our job. It's just a way to organize the thought process and making it a part of how we manage the risk. During the next couple of weeks, I'm going to be spot checking tasks. I'm going to be looking over your shoulder, and I want you to tell me what you're doing and why, just like you're thinking out loud. Otherwise, pretend I'm not even there. Got it? OK. The miners who I watch will be randomly chosen. Everyone's name is in the hat. Pick one for me, John. TK is the winner. <laughs> hey, TK. Don't laugh yet, guys. I'll get to all of you eventually. OK, that's it. Let's go to work. What? Are we going to do this today? No time like the present. But I don't even know what I'm doing yet. Doesn't matter. We'll find out together. Morning. Morning. OK, everything's about normal. Audie? Keep an eye on the pressure on that number two pump. They changed it over the weekend. Okay. Uh, Jerry, we'll be stockpiling over at B. All right. TK, you and your shadow can replace the guard at the second belt pulley. Now that's it. Now let's get to it. Get her done. All right. Ready? Ready. Ready. 
There it is. Uh-huh. Well, the first hazard I see is that the stupid guard is really heavy. And there's stand a chance of a back strain. Okay. Any any others? Well, the belt's not running, but there's a chance they may start up. And the hazard? Pinch point, roller or belt abrasion. I see lots of hazards here. See anything else, TK? Well, the grease bucket could be a tripping hazard. Yep. Yeah, there's some sharp edges and wells. Good. Any more? Well, not unless you want to nitpick. Go ahead, nitpick. Well, you could slip, bump your head on the structure. There's yeah. mud and spillage that could cause uh, footing problems. Mm -hmm. Lightning could strike. A meteor could fall, or there could even be an earthquake. <laughs> Great. Any more? Nah. I think that about covers it all. Fine. Now, how would you manage these hazards, TK? In order? I don't think I remember them all. Okay. The guard's too heavy. I'll get some help to lift it back into place. The belts aren't running, but they could start up at any time. I'll lock out the starter motor control and tag it and block it against motion. Good. What about the grease bucket? Oh, I'll just move that out the way. Okay. Well, how about the rough edges around this guard here? Well, that could be managed several ways. I could wear my gloves. I could uh, cover the rough edges with something. Or I could ground the edges down. Which is logical. Well, they all are logical, but I just probably wear gloves. But I also think the rough edges and the excessive weight need to be addressed, though. I, I agree, but how do we manage that? I think we should report these issues to the SMART team. Excellent. Great. So are we done now? No, the next one was slipping and hitting your head on the, the belt structure. How do you manage that hazard? Uh, I was just messing around. But it's a legitimate hazard. Deal with it. Seriously? Seriously. OK, knowing that it's there can help you to avoid it. Good. What about the mud and the spillage? Same thing. Knowing that it's there will help you be more careful unless it's too deep. Then what? Fill it in, clean it up to make it safe. How about the lightning and the meteors? Oh, Rick, I'll take my chances that the probability is low on that one. Good. That's it. Great. How did I do? I'd say you slammed it very well. Do I need to fill out a comment card about this guard problem? Or is telling you going to be good enough? No, fill the card out. That way we have a paper trail. We don't want any problems falling through the cracks on this. Okay, I'm going to motor control and lock it out. Okay. Okay, guys, this is our first SMART risk management team meeting. Rick, you're the team leader, so you start. Okay, John. First, I'd like to go through these comment cards. We received seven this week, and the, I sorted them by degree of risk. The first one, actually the first three, all concern guards on conveyor belts being left off. So I'd like to start with those. Okay, what should we do first? The first step 
is to stop and define the task. So the task would be putting the guard back on. End of meeting. Not quite, John. The problem was the guard wasn't put back on. Did anyone find out who took the guard down in the first place? No, we are not interested in who didn't put the guard back. The smart way is to work together as a team and eliminate the hazard. Yes, Lee, you're correct. That's what SMART is all about. So the task is still putting the guard back on? No, the task is greasing the tail roller bearings. And you have to take the guard off to get to those grease fittings. And then it's too heavy for one man to put back on. Okay, I'll buy that. So the task is greasing the tail roller. So what's next? Measure. We need to evaluate the risks associated with each task. TK's comment card spells it out pretty well. TK? Psh, what'd he say? During the SLAM exercise, TK identified two problems that required management decisions. The excessive weight of the guard and the sharp edges. What sharp edges? He saw that the guard had rough wells and sharp edges around it. We need to install grease lines so the grease fittings can be accessed without taking the guard off. This has been done on most of our other conveyors. That sounds good. That would eliminate the hazard of lifting the heavy guard. I think we should also make a new one. What for? If the grease fittings are accessible, we wouldn't have to handle it at all. Uh, let's, let's hear Lee's ideas on this first. I think I know where he's going on this. We still have an excessive weight problem. If the guard has to be removed for any other maintenance reasons. Also, what about the sharp edges and rough wells? Okay, well, what do you propose? Make a lighter one. A frame out of angle iron and expanded metal would be 10 times lighter. Also, one man could handle it by himself. Well, it wouldn't make cleanup much easier. And other maintenance too. You guys are making a big project out of a little problem. Oh, come on, John. We got all the materials at the shop. I could fabricate one up in a couple of hours. A new guard would eliminate the hazard we've been talking about. In the long run, it would save us both time and money. Besides, the cost of a back energy is much more than the cost of a guard. Okay, okay, I'll buy that. So we should forget about the extended grease lines? No, definitely not. The lighter guard and the grease lines cover all the problems. Anybody got anything else to add? Good. So what's the next step? That would be review, and I'll take care of that. After we replace the guard and install the grease lines, I'll get with the people who work around the drive and see how they respond. Okay, that covers stop, measure, act, review, and um, what's the T stand for? Uh, Train. Train. Ah, yes, that's right. Probably the most important step. Rick, you're my safety director. I want you to put together a safety and health slogan program. And these slogans can be used to develop posters that can be placed where our miners travel and work. And it's important, Rick, that the author's names appear at the bottom of these posters, and every month these posters are replaced with new ones. And guys, together, we need to be thinking about the hazards that we encounter every day and what we can do to eliminate them and watch out for each other. When you see a miner putting himself at risk, stop him. I want to thank all of you for working so hard in eliminating the hazards. And I bought a t-shirt for each of you because in my book, you're all risk slammers. Thank you. Right. And because of your involvement, we should have a healthier and safer mine. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Stop. Take a few seconds to think through every task, no matter how simple or complex you may think it is. Look to identify possible hazards for each step of the task. Analyze the hazards. Determine if you have the knowledge, training, and tools to do the task. Manage the hazards. Remove or control risks and use proper equipment. This may include reporting additional concerns to management that may need to be examined. Stop. Take time to isolate each step in a task and identify past and potential accidents, injuries, and violations. This can best be accomplished by a team of employees and management working together. 
measure each risk associated with the task and barriers that have allowed hazards to cause injuries. Act. Implement controls to minimize or eliminate the hazards. Review the result of the acts. Conduct frequent worksite visits to observe practices and audit accidents, injuries, and violations to identify root causes. What do y'all think of the new guard here? Man, that looks good. good. I like it. That's good job. That's one of the better guards I've ever seen. Well, I think so too. I think you all should know this was initiated by TK here. He sent in a comment card that the SMART committee based their work on. Good job, TK. Good job. Well done, TK. And on behalf of the entire SMART risk assessment team, we thank you. Ah, oh, thank you, Rick. Well, TK, it's your baby. Show them how it works. Train the miners. It's locked out. Develop a human factor-based action plan. One man can handle it. And then involve and train the miners. Grease fitting's good. Let's secure it. Well, that's the way it works. Incorporate all newly developed task training into the mines training plan. That's a wrap.